Good morning, I'm Camilla Radovla, I'm the RCS project coordinator. Going out of the city of Alton. Welcome to the Virginia Beach. Bob Dyer, Virginia Beach, showing up in time to produce myself. Gilstead, HRTPO. Nicole with the HRTPO. Mike Newman, Southland. John, it's not Camden. The last testing. Spies, runner, testing. Steve Nick with the Port of Virginia. Hello, Bob Crum, HRPDC and HRTPO. Uh, Mayor, we do have one or two more uh, participants who have RSVP. And McKinley Price with 43 days left. Yeah, but who's counting? Right? We're going for you known as a short some um, people who have signed on as well remotely. Um, I don't know if staff um, has names just to recognize who might be there. So, Victor, do we have names of who's? You for the TPO team, okay? And then you can come on in. Okay. Okay. It's you. It's a different robot. Okay. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have public comments? Please sign up or just address this body. We do not have any there. Okay, if not, then we'll go on to please for a motion and acceptance of the minutes of August 9th and yeah, September 20th. Please put those in the program. Second. If it's on, opposed. And we are Yes, yeah, so um, we are getting to an important part of our regional character study, the consulting team. It is looking forward to the start of the new year to begin some public Before they uh, proceed to that stage, however, we think it's important that you understand what that message is going to be and make certain that you're in concurrence with some of the approaches. This is our graphic uh, that reminds you of where we are in our approval process uh, for the phase three, which is the last phase of this study. Um, and where we are right now is we're at, at the completion of step two. So Step one was qualitative evaluation of uh, construction complexity, permitting challenges, uh, and readiness for the, the five mandatory segments. Um, step two is uh, congestion relief evaluation. It's a quantitative evaluation of congestion relief, economic benefits, and um, and then the process. That's um, what we're going to be talking to you about today. And at the end of step two today, we have a draft recommendation for how to tier the segments. And I'll, I'll talk about the, the tiering vocabulary. And then as Bob said, um, and this is um, 
on the screen there, but um, below the, the step two graphic is uh, the public meeting. So, so with, when we have the draft recommendations, we're going to go to public meetings um, um, and uh, and share the draft hearing recommendations. Uh, and we'll talk about that later as well. Um, all right, so uh, this graphic uh, reminds you about the, the mandatory segments that we are evaluating. Um, and just a reminder that uh, the 5664 segment has been broken into two parts. The northern segment, which is the darker blue, um, is uh, is the segment 1A that's still uh, part of the um, the five mandatory segments that we're considering. But the light blue portion of sub 64, we've moved that into the baseline alternative. So we're assuming that's moving forward because it's already under study um, in uh, in an EIS and it's um, and it's funded as well. So, um, so with that, that was just a quick overview of the um, agenda today. We're going to uh, review the quantitative analysis that we've completed, and then we're going to move into sharing the draft segment hearing information with you today. That's an action item. Um, and then we also have an action item related to selecting the bundles of segments that we're going to move forward with. Um, so, next slide. Somebody's using the mouse to do that. Thank you. Uh, all right. So the next slide just reminds everybody of our vocabulary around segments versus bundles. Um, segments are those five mandatory segments that we just talked about. Um, and, uh, and then the bundles are when we connect the segments up into networks. Because in order to do the congestion analysis uh, and economic impact analysis, we have to look at networks. So, uh, so when we talk about bundles, we're just referring to um, networks uh, where we've connected up those, uh, those mandatory segments. So that we can go to the next slide. Thank you, Chris. My apologies. I appreciate everybody's patience as we work with our new system here. So, so this is going to get us some copies of the PowerPoint as well, but I get everybody's patience. So my, my apologies. Okay, and then just a, another quick note, uh, the other thing that we're talking about a lot today is tiering. Um, our objective in uh, this final phase of the study is to recommend each of the five mandatory segments to be in one of these three tiers. Tier one are the segments that we see are the most ready for advancement and they're recommended for consideration in the fiscal year 2050 LRTP. Tier two is segments that are, they require some further refinement and maturation, but they'll also be recommended for consideration in the 2050 LRTP uh, with the idea that they might be in the vision plan, the unfunded portion. Um, and then tier three are the segments that have technical challenges and uncertainties and really need to be further developed in the future when it's time to address those uncertainties and solutions uh, can be found. Going to move into the quantitative um, analysis, and Paul's going to take. This looks like is that right? <laughs> so, uh, if you could go to the next slide, and one more. Well, several more. It would be slide eight. Okay, that's great. That's fine. We can work on that. So. Um, yeah, today is an important day because really, until this point, we've been building puzzle pieces and the addition of, and go, go back one slide if you want to see um, the final, yes, sir, thank you. The final part of the puzzle is to have the cost estimates that are shown there on the third bullet. But what's happened in those first two bullets is in the last few meetings, we've talked about congestion benefits and economic benefits. Um, the congestion is, is the model, the travel model that's used in this in the Hampton Roads area for transportation planning. So we develop congestion benefits, which are a function of delay. Like that's how much delay everyone is experiencing in travel due to congestion. 
and the economic benefits is another way to, to look at travel uh, impacts, and that is societal benefits and regional economic impacts of new connections and new roadway capacity. So those two parts have been on the table already in this group, and they were introduced in August. The third item on this page there is a cost estimate. So before we go to the next slide, we've had the chance in the last six months to sharpen our pencil over and over. And it's been very good for us because we want to have the most accurate cost estimates possible. This is a planning study, so we don't have construction plan, but there still are ways to have more confidence in our cost estimates. So in the last number of months, we've learned more about some plans that HRSD has. That's the Hampton Road Sanitation District that is um, doing work and proposing to do work, will be doing work at the north end of, of uh, I-664. So we've, we've been able to modify our design, our conceptual design a little bit for that. We've talked to the port, we've talked to the Navy, we um, have worked with, uh, we've investigated the impacts of the railroad and the median of, what's, of Virginia 164. So all these things have allowed us to be more precise and adjust the cost estimates. So the next slide does, it, it, you, see, you may have seen something like this if you've been in the, all the previous meetings, but if we could go to the next slide. Um, this is where we stand today. This is our most recent estimate of cost for the various segments that are shown there with regard to everything I've said um, for now. So not all of them have changed in the last month or so, but some have. So the order there is, just, if you look on the left, you see the, um, the segment numbers, 1A, which is that northern part of 664, and then 2, is that over the land part of 164, Virginia 164 winding. And then three, four, and five are those connectors that all reach out into the water. So you see quite a big variation of cost estimates there because of the nature of that work. You know, that we get into building over water and, and bridges and tunnels, and you know, the price goes up as well as just general length, the length of some of these features. So bottom line is what this cost estimate allows us to do is we can take that other information that we talked about for several meetings to another level. We can start to create ratios, like how much benefit per dollar, how much dollar per benefit. And we can start to really compare, this is a whole basket of fruit here, apples and oranges and pears, in terms of the size and scale of these ideas. So that, that, that allows us to do that. So that's, that's why today's important. By being able to do, do those comparisons, we can start to see how these various segments really stand up to one another. And that leads us to what Lorna was talking about, which is tiering those ideas. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. So, this is just kind of an overview then of, uh, of how we've wrapped up the quantitative evaluation. Um, as Paul was just explaining, um, you know, we looked and we sh at regional um, congestion and economic benefits. We shared those with you in August, but now we take a look at cost effectiveness. And, uh, and what we found was really interesting. So segment 1A, labeled on here a little bit more clearly, you can follow that. Um, that's the um, I-664 northern segment. Segment 1A, it has, you just saw, it has the highest cost, but it has um, also the highest benefits. Um, and so when we compare those together, it is, it still um, is evaluated as cost effective. Just the top one. Yeah, thank you. Um, so that was, yeah, so segment 1A, highest cost, but also highest benefits, and we find that to be um, cost effective. Segment two, which is the 164, Virginia 164 widening, um, that one has a very low cost, and it has uh, enough benefits that it also um, is evaluated to be effective. Now, segments three, four, and five, as you saw in the previous slide, so all the connectors, if you will, they all have a high cost, but they also have a lower incremental benefit. You can't really proceed with those with one of them. 
of segment 1A. So all of our um, you know, alternatives that we looked at had the widening of segment 3A in it. So when you take, when you set aside the benefit we're getting from that widening and you look at how much more benefit we get with each of those connectors and compare them to their costs, they are dramatically less cost effective. So at a high level, that's really what we uh, what we found at the conclusion of our formal growth analysis. We can go to the next slide. So to get to the tiering recommendations, what we're doing is we're combining the qualitative evaluation, which is what you see in the blue box on the left. So in the last meeting, we um, presented the update of our readiness evaluation um, and the permitting issue. The readiness um, is our factors around you know, is the um, in uh, existing funding plans, um, is it part of the managed lane network um, that the region is seeking to complete? Uh, and then what kind of there's some moment out in the future until which time you can't even build. The so, so those are the things that we looked at in readiness. And then in permitting issues, of course, we looked at the, you know, both the social and the environmental issue um, related to that. So, um, so that's the qualitative part of it. And then the quantitative evaluation is really what I just described to you, looking at the congestion benefits and the economic benefits relative to the cost. So that's the basis for our tiering recommendations. If you go to the next slide. Uh, what we want to do is really summarize for you in as straightforward a manner as we can what we found in this regard. So starting with the quantitative evaluation, what I just described to you, um, we found that there was a really marked difference in the cost effectiveness. Segments 1A and segment 2, we would say have cost effectiveness in relative terms, and segments um, 3, 4, and 5, they have uh, low uh, cost effectiveness relative Go to the next slide. So now we're going to combine that um, in this table with the, those qualitative evaluations. So here, high means um, positive is a positive thing, and um, and low is negative. So for the um, for the readiness, for example, which is the second row in the table. Uh, segment 1A um, really has the highest readiness benefits and, and fewest um, negatives around readiness. Um, segment 2 comes in with a kind of in the middle, medium rating. And then segments um, 3, 4, and 5, the three connectors, they all um, kind of have a, a low rating in aggregate for readiness because they have a lot of those issues around timing. Around future uncertainties um, and uh, security concerns and the like that make them uh, more complicated to advance and the timing less, less apparent. So, those are the readiness qualitative uh, ratings. And then the last row um, is the qualitative ratings for permitting. Um, so, here you see um, a medium rating for, one, for I 664 uh, and then a high rating. Um, uh, for Virginia 164, it's you know it's a shorter segment, it's over land. Um, we all have some concerns uh, within the overall evaluation of social and environmental issues, but um, in relative terms, um, 164 fares the best. And then the three connectors again, um, there are quite a few concerns around, uh, around those. So um, so that's a kind of one one page. Um, of the of the both the quantitative and the qualitative, uh, and, and one of the things to keep in mind is that you know, because of the word in our tiering language, technical challenges and uncertainty, and so you know this table really kind of shows you uh, that what we're seeing with. Little bigger, folks. <laughs> 
until they're gone. Checking on the, the best way to display this. Does anybody have any questions at this point? And I'm going to move it over to your discussion. Next slide. Yes, please. Okay. So uh, before um, getting into the recommendations for tiering, I just want to make a quick point, and that is that. Um, with respect to tier one and tier two, um, what we're and those segments for the um, evaluation in the HR2 field and the range transportation process. And while you know it's our intention by putting something in tier one that it wouldn't be included in the fiscally constrained in reality, once we submit it for consideration in the 2020 prioritization process of the long range transportation plan that will ultimately determine whether it's in the fiscal constrained part of the plan. Part of the plan. So we're making our intention clear here with the hearing, but we just want to be clear that it is the, the HRTPO long range transportation plan and ranking and, uh, and selection of a project for the fiscal industry. Very much at this point with everything we've said so far, um, but let's go back one. Oh no! As you saw in the summary table, there are stronger qualitative benefits and um, and cost effectiveness for segments one A, which is the I six sixty four North Ryman and two, which is the Virginia one sixty four. So as I've stated, they're different from each other. Um, the high benefits of segment 1A are high enough that they basically overcome the high cost of that segment. On the other hand, the relative benefits of segment 2, they're more modest, but because segment 2 is very modest in cost, we also see these rating there. So the technical analysis doesn't really provide a substantial distinction between those two segments. Virginia 164 alignment and um, move forward at, in our draft hearing. Then if you go to the next slide. They have very similar qualitative evaluations um, because they don't really have any benefits on the readiness side. They have a lot of concerns. Um, and then when we look at the quantitative analysis, we see that after we account for the benefits of segment 1A, the incremental benefits of these connectors are not um, as high um, and they don't fare as well in terms of cost effectiveness because they, these segments also have very high costs. There's a lot of structures, they're over water, they're complex. Um, and so, uh, so we see a lower cost effectiveness. Um, by the same token, in our ratings, we don't really see a substantial distinction between the segments three, four, and five either that would give us, you know, some reason to put some in here and some in here too. And again, just thinking of those two words that we have in the definition of tier three, all three of these segments have technical challenges and uncertainties um, that make um, So we're recommending segments Three, four, and move forward in here. So, for our draft, if you go to the next slide, to summarize the draft recommendations for tiering are um, yep, next slide. Um, so, the draft recommendations for tiering are with segment 1A and segment 2 in tier 1 and segments three, four, and five in tier three. Um, and again, we're not um, eliminating any segments, but the wording of, of 
tier three is very clear that those are segments that can be further developed at an appropriate time in the future. That's what you mean, yes. Sure. So can, I want to thank you for this and, and all the work that you all have done. I just want to ask a couple questions about the impact of, of this tiering, right? Because my understanding is that if we put it in tier three, it's not going to be in the 2050 vision plan and it's not going to be in no longer in the 2045 LRTP. So for instance, right now, the 164 connector is in the fiscally constrained plan for a planning study at $50 million. So now by taking it out of that, we're not going to be able to do any further study or planning and we're gonna miss opportunities with IIJA funding that may be able to be used to continue to plan and study this for the future at this time with available funds that could alleviate some of these barriers and challenges. Same thing with 564. If it's not at least in the 2050 vision plan, it's not eligible for us to look to these federal funding sources to do some of this planning and look at how we overcome some of these barriers and constraints or reduce some of the costs as the congestion continues to grow. And so to me, by pulling it out, not at least putting it in a tier two where we acknowledge that there's more work to do, we're gonna miss opportunities because we're not leaving it in at least a vision, right? A am I am I right about that? I don't know, I'm Kevin needs to answer that or? I have to ask the HRTP or staff to so, answer that. So Dale, what 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 Dale and I try to um, try to give that context a bit. This regional connector study will advise and inform the long range transportation plan. I think for twenty fifty. Um, think of it as um, a technical recommendation report that Dale will then take and move forward, going through the full public participation, part of the input process, et cetera. It's within that process that these recommendations will either it as presented, tweaked, or adjusted, right? So right, but it's not the final decision. Is that the best way to describe that? You know? Correct. Yeah. Um, because we work with multiple stakeholders and different processes, the RCS is just one input. Um, so there are other opportunities that if stakeholders feel strongly that we should be evaluating projects and our project prioritization and stakeholder output, then there, there's there's room for that. Um, you know, so so just because if this tier three says you know not to, not to go in the vision plan, uh, there's still possibility for it to end up in a 2050 vision plan. That being said, it does not prevent other studies from going on. Um, for 164, 564, uh, there's no requirement that it has to be in a long range transportation plan or vision plan. It certainly helps it make it more competitive when you're looking for, for funding uh, with those projects forward. I, I think the critical item for the LRTP is they also got to constrain that plan working with heaven and other funding partners, right? That constrained plan, we really. Now, through that process, it could come out that you want to have tier two and three in your vision plan. And that, you know, we'll, we'll look to the guidance of all of you, but or not that's what you want. Yes, like tier two is something that we still evaluate and get a prioritization score for, but it's in the vision plan, not in the fiscally constrained. And that maybe tier three just goes immediately to the vision plan. And there is no prioritization or evaluation. So it's still, like we're, we're saying, it's still something that the region is considering once we get more information or technology improves or you know can, can address some of these barriers. I think what we're looking at this back to our revised philosophy on this plan is not to eliminate anything, but to learn is to take advantage of this deep bench of consultant help to learn as much as we can about all of those lines on and yeah, as we move forward. If, if I may, I mean, 
notebooks requests and all of this is just to keep these things on the table so that at some If there's some senator 20 years from now that's able to get big bucks for this region, let's keep it on the table so that we can move forward with it if possible. So is there truly any harm in just throwing them into year two? So that if that happens, it won't likely happen in our political lifetimes, but just leave it as an option so that those who follow us can or cannot activate that option. That's that's all I'm really asking. Is there any harm in doing that? Just to stress, that's the decision of this group. We're here to reflect what you all and our policymakers. I'm going to be honest, the difference between tier two and tier three vision plan or not is, as, as you all know, if you can bring funding to the table, we work all the time to move things forward, right? Is there harm in having it all in the vision plan? I don't think so. Um, but we want to be sensitive to all our host cities too and make certain everybody's comfortable with that. Um, you know, to be honest, where Dale and I have to be really clear though is what's in that fiscally constrained plan, right, Dale? Because that means we're, we're committing and with the more allocating money. You know, you, you, you just go with the tier one and then combine tier two and three. We really look for your direction on as opposed that, that'd be my request and i'm not going to sit here and say if we only have a little bit of money that we shouldn't do monitor merrimack first right I and mean, i think if we don't put our heads together that makes the most sense i get it but let's just keep them on the table for maybe later on i'm sure that'll be the reason and mr chairman if i can in support of that you know the port has been extremely successful in applying for getting federal grants and I think if you don't put these into tier two and at least have them in the vision plan, which means we're not putting money on them right now, but we're saying as a region, this is where we're prioritizing and this is our vision for the future. So they know that these are things we want to continue to explore and we can help attract money so that planning money where we can continue to look at these barriers and forecast the congestion and the needs for this community and move towards solutions. If we put it in tier three and we don't put it in the vision plan, what is our vision? We're going to do this and then we don't need anything else? Because I can tell you, if we're competing against North Carolina and South Carolina and our other competitors, and they have things in their vision plan, they're going to get funded before something that's not even in our vision. And so I would just ask you to consider that when you're considering, it, again, the Fiscally constrained plan is one thing. The vision plan puts us in the best position to then go and request these planning funds so that we can continue to keep these moving forward and focused on solutions and not barriers. So it seems to me like that's very easy. Maybe it will come out that way in the process, but. If you did, you almost have to change the description of the or the integrity of the study. You have to put the information that's in tier three into tier two as well. And that would have to be something that obviously we would like to do. Mr. Chairman, I think the key question is, and I think we're at a really important maybe a wider road. And again, we can make either approach work. Which one we want to go on that would be helpful to consult the team that would make this. Okay, any other comments on, on the approach that's been suggested? Uh, any other comments on that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what you're saying. Um, I believe that um, one of the for tier one along there. Um, but right now, we also have the challenges with respect to being anything related to King Island uh, and how we really feel about it. But in fact, if we do want to leave open the possibility that funding might be available at some point, um, what's
Yes, sir. So in the meeting, Orkin had raised some concerns about segment two and potential impacts in neighborhoods along the corridor. And I'm not sure that the proposal has ever provided a response. So it's suitable and satisfactory. With that being said, we prefer to see a segment two and potential impacts. That again, I didn't quite understand the last part you said. So there's a for the live in one six before the potential uh, at least uh, what they're showing to move those sound walls towards those neighborhoods in the corridor. So what are those impacts to the neighborhoods going to be? Uh, without knowing that Portland can't really get behind the main segment or tier one, get the emergency and then the biggest impacts of those uh, sliding things in the house. In the most recent evaluation, and and this was presented at the um, September 27th meeting, was to look at those concerns uh, closely and for uh, complex uh, engineering analysis, whether it appears that the widening of 164 would take entire properties along the corridor, or if it would just require a small amount of land on either side. So we really took a Close look at that question with respect to the rail requirements um, and also, you know, the, um, the full engineering team, engineer um, explained it a little bit better. But, uh, but we, so we took a very close look at that. We sent out the, um, the, the drawings of that corridor um, in September, you know, for review. Um, and then we updated the qualitative evaluation and um, we also considered in the cost estimate. Um, what that was that um, even taking the, the, the most conservative look at how much we might need to widen to the outside, we did not think that it would be necessary to take all of the parcel adjacent to 164 on the northwestern part of the border, you know, where the neighborhoods are right against it. Take a close look at that question based on the comments we had had previously. Is uh, is that the that whole displacements along the border don't appear likely? The plan of color or those are so very well. Further questions or, or comments on this before we get try to get a consensus on this? Mary, Mary sure. Uh, you know, the one thing that we talked about with the consultant team and Kevin, you and I have, have, have talked about with your team and it's talked about is, you know, when we sit in 2022 and we are attempting to craft the best plan for the future with the best of it. Year one, you have some certainty and and as Mr. Wright said, some questions, right? And things we got to work through. And we're going to have to hear what the public has to say about that, too, right? I think those are critical, critical issues. As you get down, and there's a number of unknowns, including just technology, right? I mean, who, who would have thought decades ago Kevin would be boring a tunnel here, right? <laughs> um, and um, and yeah, what we learned from that, and, you know, Vice Mayor Thomas, what, you know, our, our eyes just can't see is if we ever get to building that third crossing across the harbor, what does that technology look like? Do we really, um, Kevin, you talked about, you know, where, how, where you need to start that boring now changes depending on that technology and maybe helps deal with some of those permitting issues. So we can't really put a period or a dot on, on you across those T's just yet. So, what we just want to say is there is flexibility. We, we've got to be certain on that fiscally constrained plan. But, you know, I think how we hear those two and three, I think what we want to do is just learn and understand the questions we've got to get answers to as things evolve over time. There's going to be cost issues, there's going to be new technology, community need, um, all, all of those things that we're going to have to be nimble and adjust to over time. Um, so, I just want to stress, Mayor, that whatever format you all as a group feel you can reach consensus on, we can make this study and the input work in that way. Is is there a, and 
I don't know the constraints of the tiering of the actual definitions, if that means something, but would a 2A and a 2B solve things for health equipment? We can structure that however you want. The tier one, two, and three is not something that comes out of federal guidelines. Right. That's sort of our, our study process as we try to evolve and respond to what your needs are. So we, we can make those tiers tailored to what you all want to read as. Just to be able, does that help anything? Yeah, I actually um, think in a way you could keep the tiers one, two, and three. And one is saying, could us consider and evaluate for the fiscally constrained plan. Tier two is us still evaluate. So it has a prioritization score, but it goes in the vision plan. Um, but that if new funding comes available, it's 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 more readily able to be considered for the fiscally constrained plan. And then tier three is staff doesn't have to reevaluate this in the prioritization tool. It's just going directly into the vision plan with no prioritization score. And maybe that's a way to address these. And then what we could do is we could say, okay, what are the unknowns, right? A new infrastructure package that's <laughs> what, is what it is now, well, we would want to be in the game, right? So maybe, you know, so some things could shift around in the future, depending on how funding opportunities and technology evolves. Okay. Does, yes, that prompts a question, if I may. Sure. Are these three tiers used anywhere else in what we do in this region? Or no, but it does inform what we're going to take as a staff when they all down and it's really going to start getting serious about the 2050 long range plan. What ends up in tier one? Keeping in mind, uh, Mr. Thomas, that we take action all the time to when money becomes available, we fiscally fund it. We take action all the time to add things to the plan. Right? Like high rise bridge. Like high rise bridge, right? <laughs> exactly. That was the first <laughs> So it doesn't necessarily make sense to have three tiers if we intend on ending this with only using two of those three. So combining the definitions of two and three to get to where we all want to be makes a lot of sense. Yes, sir. The, the question I have is, does the tier two and three make a difference when we move into the next step, step three? So I'm jumping ahead to the next present presentation. It looks like the only ones carried forward in the step three, which is the scenario analysis and the traffic operations analysis is tier one and tier two. It looks like in there that you have a, the scope only includes like three, new scope only includes three areas or three monies to study. So I think that's something that maybe we should take into account as well before, because that's the next portion after you guys vote on this portion. Can that be explained, please? Yeah, sure. So, so the uh, I was I appreciate that because I had this point on my mind as well. So, um, as we move forward in the study, uh, you know, kind of in the vein of of adding more information and understanding about uh, the segments that we are recommending, the next to uh, study us uh, up to three bundles uh, of the segments in the scenario planning. So if you remember early in the study, we set up uh, three greater growth scenarios, and I've got some slides on this to go into this, but um, what is, is, is kind of a stress test. What happens if there's more growth in the region? What happens if there's more uh, uh, activity through the ports? What happens if there's more military growth? So there's some different things going on in the three scenarios uh, that kind of allow us to put the segments to, to more of a test and see how they perform, see if they bring additional benefits, um, and et cetera. So that step, uh, the way our scope of work is written is that we're going to pick uh, segments that are moving forward in tiers one or two to consider um, in the scenario planning uh, process. So, so there is, so whatever we do here also, you know, it has an implication for uh, how much uh, additional study of the segments will occur in the last phase of this project. With that consideration, knowing that there's a vast sea of unknowns for the three, four, and five segments, are you going to get quality data, the analysis of the scenario planning, or is it there's so much out there that we, we can't put in that whatever we get out of those will be not comparable with any other statistics? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, so we have the information that we have. 
So we'll be using the cost estimates that we have now that we've developed. But granted, you know, there's a lot of contingencies in the projects that have uncertainty around them. Um, but but I but I think overall, since what we're doing in that step is largely using the travel demand model and representing the network to understand the traffic benefits, um, then we are uh, there's there's less um, that we need to understand. Where we do run into issues is the other thing that we will be doing in step three is operational analysis, and it it, it would be challenging to do operational analysis of the segments that have you know greater uncertainties around them. Um, with respect to how it can actually connect to the rest of the network. So, um, so we, have, we have to think about that part of it, but with respect to the scenario. Mr. Yeah. Chair, I wonder, I have this vision that maybe we could combine tier two and three, call it something, tier two slash three or something, but only do the scenario analysis on the tier one segments. I mean, hybrid. And, and I think, um, you know, Dale's earlier point is a, is a key one as well. So not only are we carrying the way our scope is right now, tier one and tier two into the step three analysis, but those are the ones that sort of automatically are being referred for evaluation in the in the LRTP process. If, um, you know, if, so one alternative, if we think all of that additional analysis now on the, um, on the three connector segments isn't, as valuable, we can. One option is to change sort of the wording of tier three. So we would go into the vision plan. Um, I think that's been said a couple of times. I just wanted to point out that's another approach that kind of gets to the same uh, objective. Uh, because the distinction is really how much more analysis we want to do on the connector segments. So I think what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing as far as the consensus that we like to have at least a three, four, and five place in the future so this, the funding for the potential funding for them is not in jeopardy. And any kind of way the wording goes to make that happen, I think we are. Yeah. 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 So, what we're hearing then, just to recoup real quickly, is here one. Um, we have conveyed to the public that these are those uh, segments that we're contemplating taking forward to place in our recommended they be incorporated in the Norway transportation plan, fiscally constrained plan. Tier two, we just have two tiers, are those that we're continuing to study, we're continuing to understand what, what the plan will be on, any opportunities, technology advances, and, and other community needs. For now, we will place them in the vision. Is, is that any objections to that? And then we have a watch and order section. It's all team that we've been to. Is it clear about the scenario plan? Um, I, th I think we'll we'll determine that okay. with the next decision, okay. but I think that was well said, Bob, okay. and that. So in, in essence, we're combining tiers two and three. Um, uh, will be considered will be included in the vision plan. I think that's the key. Right. And, and if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I also think that by phrasing it that way, and I'm going to go back to the important comment of Mr. Wright and, and Mr. Jackson continue to make with Mayor Glover. and transparent to our public as we go out with the public engagement that being this and I think that will allow them to provide good comment on that a little entire process of labor on some of those issues, right? Um, because I you know they I know the city's been consistent and we are very serious about recognizing that. If you group them all together, the public thinks they're all the same level of advancement. I don't think that's, as, we want to be more transparent than that. So I think this two tier grouping might be easier for the public to uh, comment on as well. So in, in the scope of, of tier one going forward with funding, and I'm just trying to get in my mind the next steps with that, because I'm looking at what we were talking about, delaying that or moving forward. 
because that's something that TPO as a larger body recommends for financing as far as when and how that is done. So this will all be inputs into Dale Hall Range. Sorry, I say Dale's part of the Range transportation. <laughs> <laughs> it's the brand now. <laughs> But it's all input into the RTP as Dell manages that process. We go forward, there will eventually be a decision of the TPO policy board, and then that will be uh, uh, in terms of that next um, uh, fiscally constrained major regional project for congestion relief and funding. So we would, is there official recommendation we need to do? There is an action. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's a little bit different, um, but I think kind of the elegance we've arrived at now is basically that, um, if you go to the next slide, what we're recommending is that we move forward with um, the draft tiering has tier, um, has segments 1A and 2 and tier 1. We'll revise that to be tier two, and that is the um, the, the recommended category for segments three, four, and five. So uh, somebody might want to put the exact wording. Your chair, uh, I think uh, a potential potential motion might be that the regional connector study policy group and working group um, direct the consultant team to move forward with the public engagement and further analysis scenario analysis. Um, do that with two tiers instead of three, right? Tier one would include segments 1A and 2, and then as Lauren indicated, tier two would include segments 3, 4, and 5, and that the tier description would be revised to indicate that tier one would be recommendations for the LRTP and in tier two would be recommendations to be embedded in the division. Green back, could we have someone to agree to the motion that Bob just quoted? I so move. Is there a second? second? Moved and second. Any discussion on that? Just that this would be with the understanding that when we, it looks like we need approval for the scenario analysis, that we would have to adjust that because the next thing that we're going to approve, it looks like y'all are going to approve, is tier one and two are what we carry forward. Now that we've sort of redefined tier one and two, everything goes forward. So I think we would do that with the understanding that we've got to adjust the next. Right. Talk about that. Hearing no further there's discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed. Lauren, you want to okay. take us forward? Yes, absolutely. So can we go to the next slide? I just want to do a quick reminder um, with, the, with the visuals about the scenario analysis. So um, back in phase two of this study, um, one more slide for it, please. Uh, we worked closely with the um, working group of this study to develop three greater growth scenarios. And what we did, as you see in the chart on the right, is um, we, we have a baseline future growth forecast, and then we added additional growth um, across the region in the greater growth forecast. And, um, and, and then we use that additional growth to craft three different um, future growth scenarios. So we, the, the distribution of growth is a little bit different. Um, the economic drivers of that growth are a little bit different in each of those three scenarios. I'll describe them in a minute. Create a stress test on the transportation network and particularly the harbor problem. And as written, our scope of work allows us to test up to three bundles um, in tiers uh, that are defined in tiers one and two. So, um, so the greater growth scenarios, if you go to the next slide, um, just to refresh your memory, these were approved by this body uh, back in 2019. Uh, we have greater growth on the water, um, which focuses the jobs and housing um, and more urban areas around the water. We have greater growth in the urban centers, um, which is pretty self-explanatory, and then greater suburban and greenfield growth. Um, and so, uh, as I said, that by changing the distribution of growth and some of those economic drivers, um, we, we put a stress test on this and, and we test different travel patterns that result from, from the land test. So if you go to the next slide, um, 
recommendation coming into this meeting of what bundles to look at, um, we were recommending that we move forward with scenario testing of the tier one bundles, um, given that we had not had a recommendation in tier two. So we were recommending that for the scenario analysis, we move forward with bundle A and bundle B, as you see on the screen. Bundle A is the widening of, uh, say, of I-364 segment 1A um, in the northern portion, and then um, segment bundle B is widening of 664 and widening of so, uh, so there is a decision to be made if we combined here two and three um, for purposes of ensuring that those uh, segments are considered in the vision plan. Do you also want to consider including those segments in the scenario analysis? Or because we're kind of a gray area relative to our scope of work since we just changed what we meant by the years. <laughs> um, so, um, and uh, and we can do up to three bundles. So if you want to add a bundle that includes some of those segments, we can do that. My concern is that our scope to um, traffic operations analysis on each of those segments, and that might be a little bit more challenging to find the bundles that we make those bundles. Well, in my mind, the, the main objection was to make sure that there was a future outlook for bundles three, four, and five. I think in my mind to study with what we currently have, the data would be a negative impact on three, four, and five at this point. So, not putting them in that study, I would recommend we do in the future. The only thing I would say is perhaps you uh, delineate and not do transportation operation analysis of those now, but maybe stress test where some of the growth is going. And the only reason I say that is if you look at Suffolk, for instance, in the last year, I think there's been the amount of announcements they thought there were going to be in the next nine years, right? And so, and you, and you look at where the opportunities for growth are in Suffolk, all of like, it's that section that's the Norfolk to that crossing actually complements, right? If you look at Portsmouth, the offshore wind industry and the amount of housing and folks who are going to work that industry, right? It, moving forward, I mean, there are a lot of things going on right now that might be inputs into that analysis of where future growth is going to be and how the demand might increase more rapidly than we expected. And so, not necessarily the operational pieces, because those will probably be more informed by reducing some of the technical challenges of the construction and those things. But as far as stress testing, where the growth and the demand around the region is going to be, I think we may want to say do at least the first piece for the tier two. And that's just a recommendation to the group to consider. Any comments on that? Yeah, I so, um, what I hear you suggesting is, is that perhaps we should go, we should do three bundles. Um, we can do the two that are on the screen, um, and then we can add a third bundle that includes um, more of the segments. And just, I, I don't want to put the committee in a position of making a snap decision on that. So I don't know, um, Bob and Mr. Chairman, if, if, um, if you want me to just go ahead and, and recommend what I think we should do, or if you'd like, uh, if there's a way of giving kind of a provisional approval to move forward with three bundles. That include the, the segments for scenario. Uh, I think there's a way we could do that. Uh, basically, with bundle A, um, Virginia 164, Virginia 164 connector, and the, that gets you all the way across. And then the third bundle would be bundle C, which has um, uh, the 664 and 564. So um, I don't know if you could perhaps give you know give a provisional recommendation because I'd sort of like the rest of my team to weigh in on it that if that gives us the right kind of information so we can do the same kind of comparisons we did this time and have that insight um, uh, that would we'd be happy to move forward with, with three bundles um, for scenario testing that includes segments of both tier one and three, but with the agreement that that traffic operational analysis. Will 
Thank you, Chairman. Mayor. Dr. Robin Bach is our project manager. Do you concur with that? Or do you? Scenario analysis uh, for the stress test. I think that's a good idea, and uh, that's something that Lorna just mentioned. They can do it, but the operations that might be a little bit complicated, and I don't think we need to do that. So well, I feel comfortable with that. Thank you. Agreement. So we have agreement with that scenario. Good. I think that's an action item um, as well. If you go to the Next slide, um, as, as just stated, uh, as opposed to what we have. So, is there someone who would give a motion um, delineating what she just uh, outlined as the motion? Lord, would you mind me saying that? <laughs> <laughs> so, the action is for the consultant team to move forward to analyze three bundles that include segments from tiers one and two as redefined. study team, the technical study team will decide the combination of segments in those bundles that we feel will reveal the most information to help this group. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chairman, for yes. the remainder, remainder of the presentation, it's uh, talking about the public engagement process. So you've got that in your handout. I would just like to make one quick note. Yes. There's no action items in it, but we did we had a great meeting with the community advisory committee um, uh, shortly after this group met. Uh, that was in October, and um, and they recommended that we shift the location of the Newport News public meeting um, to a different library than we had recommended. And that is the um, the Pearl Bailey Library, which is closer to the study corridor. So, um, so what you'll see in your handout is that we are suggesting public meetings in early February, uh, four locations, and kind of the parameters for those meetings are in your handout. And then, as soon as we have the dates nailed down for those, um, we will we will move forward uh, and provide that information. And that's all you really need to know in terms of that. So we want to be certain that those locations, uh, Mr. Chairman, are the uh, team did their best to take input, uh, even by input from the community advisory committee, but just making certain that you think we have the questions. And so we've checked on transit accessibility, and we really like that the yeah. location is accessible to two um, parts of the corridor. Suffolk residents, but also the Virginia 164. Thank you. That's all right. So, uh, the next video is to be determined. Um, any other items that need to be brought before this committee? Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I'd be remiss if, um, with your last, um, uh, Regional Connector Study meeting as our, as our chairman, if I didn't just take a look off the table, um, agrees that because thank you so much for your time and your commitment and um, knowing what you give the PDC, but regional studies such as this, um, we will be in a position our next meeting once uh, we have everybody seated here uh, to elect our, our next chairman of uh, this Regional Connector Study, but may I pray so. Thank you so much for having me. And, and may I advise the uh, mayors, uh, don't be late at that next meeting or you're ready. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.